but I'm sure a lot of people do. DG does have that fan base. There are people behind him. Complexity growing. Another one is get again coming out of Challenger with quite the fan base to start. And right now, those fans are going to be voting on who they think will win as we head into picks and bans for your second game of the day. Complexity versus Evil Geniuses. We're going to see what these guys have for the mind games before they get to the rift games. Quick bans. One to the jungle, a few to the mid lane. And Jax, he's been seeing some play back and forth. Inox on those carry top laners, though, and West Rice. Just not something that the teams want to see this game. Yeah, interesting matchup here from the top laners because both of them not afraid to take any trades one versus one. We'll have to see if they actually end up meeting one versus one. The very, very popular Shivana is still available. Yeah, she's going through this week. Jack's already being taken off the board. Siobhan extremely strong right now just because she works so well with teleport. Um, you know, being able to jump and have a speed boost when you do come into the teleport t kind of takes away that weakness where your tank is joining the fight a little bit late yeah. just because she can cover so much distance when she gets there. Wow. Besides the Shivana pick, pretty much going same as last game. Lucian gets himself two fist first picks on the second week of LCS play here in the summer. Robert X. Lee having the triple last time on that, getting red and blue buff in the bottom lane to snowball over Cloud9, so they're trying to replicate a little bit of that. I don't know if they'll get the triple, but Robert, one of the better AD carries we've been seeing around. Yeah, this bottom lane, I think, is going to determine a lot because, as you're, as you're saying, complexity, one of their biggest strengths has been the bottom lane with Robert X. Lee, and Altec has not been doing that well in the laning phase. So That's if right. Complexity are able to snowball that bottom lane, uh, then that could be their path to victory. His fight phase, though, he's definitely racked up some kills in that. Altec does know how to position once you get out of that lane. Lulu and Shivana picked up, as we were just saying. That could go anywhere. We just saw Divers playing Lulu in the top lane for one of the first times we saw in the LCS. And Man Cloud is going to grab Bubba Dub on the Morgana. Just the possibility to get kills in the bottom lane. You're going to hit one or two Dark Bindings. And if you can get Robert that advantage, you'll get the win. So they have that combo, too, locked in with both Elise and Morgana, that Cloud9 extremely yeah. long-duration CC skill shot combo. If they both go cooldown reduction, it could be a nightmare in the end game for Evil Genius's front line. Well, we always know Crepo tries to take Morgana and run super cooldown. That's a big play from him. Meanwhile, Evil Genius looking pretty beefy with their first two picks. Uh, support uh, or mid lane Lulu. Mm. If she does go mid lane, um, then they really do need a hard carry from Altec and maybe a little bit of damage from the jungle as well. Uh, let's see what uh, Snoop ends up going with. I guess they leave it for the last pick here. Yeah. Interesting. Altec's loving this Corky, by the way. The mixed damage, <laughs> uh, pretty big mid game spike, especially once he completes his Trinity Force. Mm -hmm. I like seeing it different, too, because Sneaky likes to play it with the Zerker Greaves. You see Altec and other guys playing it with the Sork Boots. Each to his own. Depends on how you're, uh, you're fighting with Corky. Mm -hmm. If you're getting off more auto attacks uh, in the fights or you're shoving a lot more, the Zerker Greaves definitely pay off. But a lot of the poke and the harass is magic damage, and you get a really big boost in damage from Sork Shoes. Yeah, never-ending debate. So, late poke locked in here for Complexity. They've got very strong skill shots on their team. Wow. It's been a while since Man Cloud brought out the Nidalee for us in the LCS. Always loving the long-range poke. Remember him on Zareth, on Lux, on all of the long-range, but it'll be Nidalee this game. That puts a lot of pressure on good Shivana ultis. You have to flank around from the back or get a weird angle where they don't see you coming in order to get into the middle of the team for the Lulu knockup, because Thresh is not a reliable engage for this EG team. They don't really have a very strong range engage for Evil Geniuses to get to that Nidalee besides the Shivana. So it's going to be important Shivana uh, Lulu interactions. Okay, now locking in Kha'Zix, they have one more option. He can get in there invisible, but still, uh, it is going to be a lot of. That's a tough of team emphasis. to jump into. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of emphasis on that first Lulu ulti. 
Hard enough getting to an AD carry, but when you have Soul Shackles locked onto that cocoon, you're running into, if Westrice hasn't already teleported into the middle of your fight, burning agony constantly. Robert X Lee, we'll see what he can do versus Alltac. We'll see if they even get matched up in these lanes. We usually see EG try to go for that separate lane in the 2v2. So they go for the 2v none, as it is right now. <laughs> so as the teams take to the rip, let's check the fan vote over to LOLesports.com, where 54% of you are calling the game for Complexity's side. And as always, do not forget to continue voting on Twitter by sending your pick to either hashtag COLWIN or hashtag EGWIN at LOLesports. So EG saying that they're going to use somewhat of Complexity's time not on the LCS stage in this best of one environment. But they've been challenger it, accordingly across the board. These guys, most of them have been on the LCS stage, so they somewhat know it. So they're going to have to attack Man Cloud in the mid lane. Something they may be able to do is kind of get him to fall where he was towards the end of the split with XDG. Wasn't having the best style of play. They were able to kind of shut down the jungler connection with him, and then it was almost done from there. Yeah, last time ManCloud got a new jungler switching yeah. Smithy and Zuna. Didn't work out for the right. beginning. So we'll have to see how he jumps into a whole new team this time around. I mean, you can't really say, hey, ManCloud, play like Prawley. Just beat Prawley, right. yeah. be our shot caller. <laughs> Like, when Cloud9 take Link, they're like, okay, just play like high, be our shot caller. And they're like, hey, okay, oh, kind of works. All right. You can't do that with Prawley. Prawley's crazy. Nobody can just be Prawley. You can't just play like Prawley. Yeah. So. And then what do you do? Pick super safe. You can't get LeBlanc in there to get yourself safe. Remember Alex Ish saying, I think it was on LeBlanc and Nidalee, he's like, I hate playing against them because you can't kill them. They're always so safe. So put Man Cloud on that. Let him do his own thing in mid lane and stay safe. Gonna get into the game. Got some Astro Nautilus shirts represented in the crowd. Pretty great. Love all the league stuff and everybody here to rep the game. Shouting for their favorite teams. Complexity versus EG is our second game of the day. We're out of the base. All right, let's see. Defensive starts from everybody. Welcome to as well as normal lane lineups. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna be. I'm excited about that. Got a lot of good fights today. Not a good matchup. We'll see how this um, Thresh and Morgana matchup does end up working out. It's always interesting uh, timing on those black shields. A little bit slightly lower cooldown on Thresh Hook. If just one binding lands, it could be a lot of damage follow up there. So Krempo's got to be quick on his feet, and it also means that side lane bush control very important. Low waiting. The vote going back and forth just a little bit as teams set up. Another game where it looks like we'll actually have regular starts in the jungle. Nobody's going to be an invading on this one. You can always be in the lane bully, like you said. EG's going to have a hard time coming up on this one. But Robert could have the chance to go into the top lane here. Yeah, definitely going to be a late invade here from Complexity. They choose it. See if they walk right through Inox. It looks like they're trying to counter invade, actually. This is the common ledge to stand on. Expecting a swap from EG. There is no swap, though, from EG. <laughs> they are very confident going with their bottom lane, running into a two versus two situation. So, Complexity are the ones who pull the swap hmm. going up top. Now, this is not bad for them. They do have a. Uh, Spell Thief's Edge on Morgana, which will help harassing that turret down if they want to push it down. If they don't want to push it down, though, actually it hurts his gold generation because he won't be able to get procs on, on any opponent since nobody's going to be there, two versus zero. And he won't want to get too many on the turret because they're trying to leave it up to deny minion waves. This doesn't work out right away. We'll see how they factor in. A little bit of that. So far, free farming isn't that hard, so they should be good for the time being. Help here on the red buff that we see coming in for Broken Shard and West Rice. Inox was a little bit off of Snoopy taking that on. Inox didn't think that it was going to be Robert actually and Bubba Dub, so he's still level one, kind of huffing around the jungle as Snoopy already got two. Slow rolling here, but it's going to be impact plays now. The red and the blue buff are done on to Snoopy. We'll see if he can get any kills. He's heading towards the white. See what he can do for the mid lane. Man Cloud staying 10 13 as Poe Belter isn't trying to do anything crazy. Oh, there he goes. He's Glitter Lansing. He's just waiting for the right time. 
Yeah, Lulu definitely has the advantage early on yeah. Italy. Shoving her in at the weak points where he has no wave clear. It also means you have to worry about early jungle invades because Nidalee will constantly be pushed into a turret. Pretty much both uh, top winners though, just going with the scavenger style jungling. Picking up scraps. The damage going ever so slowly to the turrets. But this is good play here from EEG. Something we usually don't see is they say, you know what, our bottom side of the jungle was empty. Yours probably isn't. So now both of them are just hovering around Complexity's jungle. This may shut down Broken Shard a bit, but they almost have the same idea. All the way in the top side, Broken very, Shard. Yeah, very, West very Rams. even starts here for both teams. Pretty much mirrored up until this point, where EG decided to go mid, and oh. Complexity decided to go top. Gotta stay safe. Man, Cloud's saying they show me a little bit of love mid. Both summoners blown there. We'll see how Complexity reacts to this, because now it's their turn to make a move, and it looks like it got seen by the ward. So, EG Pobalt are privy to that situation, stay safe. West Rice and Inox, or rather Snoopy and Inox, stay in the jungle together. Slow game. Yeah, Inox on that Shivana can actually split up from some Take camps himself. Decent AoE. West Rice and Broken Shard, though. Together for life. Second Doran's coming in for Enox, so it looks like he actually has uh, the idea to stay and keep farming, keep himself safe. Gets a little bit of HP on that buy, as long as some damage. I have to say, the extended jungling, too, is pretty good for Westrice on that Mundo. Doesn't have to worry about his oh, super yeah. early squishy <laughs> phase. If he does try and hold a two versus one, he's got to worry about getting Tower Dove. At level five if he gets died. a one versus one with Shivana, then she has the advantage early. So this extended double jungling it's probably the best scenario for West Rice. The ganks, not quite as successful, yeah. but uh, back to the jungle with you two. So as an AD carry in this situation, since you don't see pressure, when is the right time to go back? Since you kind of just left alone, huh? No, they, yeah, you just need to control the wave as long as possible. Don't have to rush back. You got to wait for the opening when the other team decides to go for that lane swap. See Robert X Lee, no pressure to go back as you say. Farming in the face of Enox without too much vision, actually. Nothing underneath him, so he's pretty far out for this time. Looks like he's going to get this wave and actually still keep pushing up. He doesn't have any vision, though. No. Snoopy coming around. Very scary situation for an AD carry. He's got both summoners, though. <laughs> it's okay. Should be able to he handle can himself. Him to live. Snoopy's getting in behind him, though. going to have to use no that lifeline. He does have the minion wave. Snoopy making it through. Got a little jazzed up there on the minions. That was very well played by Robert X Lee, except for that part. But then it was good. <laughs> but no, great play by both guys. Robert X Lee kind of do -si doing around the minion, so can't get a good void spike off there. And it's like we're back to still no kills. Six and a half minutes in, Robert decides to wait for the minion wave to come to him in the top lane. And Man Cloud just hitting six. Takes a nice chunk of Glitter Lance there from Bobelter. 44 to 41, so even pressure up to the turret. Man Cloud's been doing well here. Yeah, he's farming very well under his turret so far. Hasn't even fallen behind Lulu. So very good start for them. Now though, as we approach the seven minutes, we start worrying about secondary buff spawn. The second blue buff. Blue buff very important for this complexity team. Italy poke teams really, really want to start with an early lead. Uh, because Nidalee's power comes from throwing spears. Uh oh, Kreppo does get bound. That's a close one. Yeah, the Black Shield's still there. Nice hit by Boba Duck. The, uh, the Nidalee poke team. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can get the blue glove. Oh, gets in there for the smite. Snoopy oh, flashes for it. Go get it. He's running. Snoopy trying to put on the blue suede shoes to get out of this. He's got a pink there. It's going to be Poe Belter. Snoopy steals Baron last game. He'll take blue buff for now. The Good hero enough. steal there from Snoopy, risking everything for it. I said it was important, but it's not worth dying for. He gets it and gets out. Great play there from Snoopy, able to deny that blue buff and slow down that uh, Nidalee snowball. She really wants to be able to siege up those spears offensively. She doesn't have good wave yeah. clear, so if they get behind early, then it's very hard for the Nidalee teams to come back. Hopefully it doesn't crumble into a Snoopy needs flash situation. But right now, definitely playing into their favor. That was uh, Man Cloud and Broken Shard thinking they had the upper hand until the cavalry of Alltech and Crepo alive. 
to split in the D there. Tries to get a quick hook through the turret. All tech. A 400 damage there. Not too shabby. Still waiting for level 6 on the AD carry there. And level 4 for Krepo. He's actually two levels behind in that bottom lane. They've also been able to defend their own blue buff. So this is not going to turn into a blue buff trade. EG pretty much got out scot-free. Yep. See if they can make anything happen with this pressure mid. Taking advantage of that no wave clear in Italy. And they do get the early turret. It's going to open up a lot of the jungle for them. Great play there. I think Broken Shard was getting red, but no other defense on the mid lane. They're all kind of melee. Wouldn't have anything to do with it anyways. Good pressure by Evil Geniuses to start. Taking a bit of control. 1,000 gold on the board for them in the lead. And they are starting to just do little bits of pressure that they thought Complexity wouldn't. So far, they're right. Yeah. Taking some risks. They did pay off. They also have uh, okay ward coverage around the river. Yeah. See any moves from Broken Shard. One of the things about Complexity is that when they do get behind, especially Broken Shard, tries to make a lot of risky plays to catch them back nice up. So if you have vision control versus complexity, you can take advantage of their willingness to go for risky plays. And you can just snowball your lead so that they don't have any chance of coming back. This does not look like fun. The level seven to level five, now six. West Rice gets a lot of safety with that level up, puts it right in the ultimate. Looks like he'll find a little bit of pressure here coming from Snoopy. Remember, Snoopy's flash is down, so they don't have much crowd control or to anything to stick with Westrice with the ults. And now Westrice got to worry about that tower dive. There was no flash for Snoopy. Right. He said might come be a factor later. Uh, Westrice has his ulti, but really, his ulti just puts him lower when he casts it. So if he does that under his turret, might make it easier for EG to go through with this tower dive. They don't have deep wards though, so counter yep. gank they have to worry about. Actually calling up Po Belter just to make sure they will have the numbers. Oh, looks like it's gonna be Man Cloud just on the edge of this one as well. Po Belter walks into the fight. All the players are present. Broken Shard goes up on the repel. He's gonna be all right with just a little bit of HP. Comes down, goes down. Poe Belter is sliver as well. The blue buff to be transferred oh, over. He gets oh, the flame breath! Gets him down. They get the shred on him as well. Man Cloud gets the pounce, gets the kill. Can he get the heal out? Going for one surge, it'll keep him alive. He's got the potion going. The red oh. buff is there, but he can't get anything to match what he needs. Crepo doing what he can in a 2v1 situation. Bubba Dub. Watch out on that micro. The turret goes very low to 300 HP, and Crepo in a 2v1 holds it off. EG aggressive around the map. Coming up pretty big. Very, bad. very uh, good dive there from EG. They don't focus West Rise. As soon as they see the squishier members show up, Broken Shard on the front side, they target him instead, and they take him out of the fight. Oh, very nicely done. Hook to the back line. There's Inox coming into the teleport. Robert actually didn't even expect it. And EG has just turned on the afterburners. Back to back amazing moves from Inox. Up top in the tower dive, he did something extremely smart. When Broken Shard repels up into the sky, he's untargetable, but he can still take AoE damage. So Inox ults and leaves the burning trail under the spot where Broken Shard was. So by the time he comes down, he already dies to the burning fire. Yeah, okay, let's take a look at this replay here. Because Inox, they immediately focus Broken Shard. He jumps up, he leaves the fire trail there. So this whole time, Broken Shard's burning, boom. As soon as he comes down, he's out. And the red buff allows Broken Shard to slow West Rice and screen for Pobelter. Even though he does end up going down here, the teleport later down to the bottom lane as well. So back-to-back -back plays on both sides of the map for Inox. Pobelter just wants to get a little more fantasy points by <laughs> taking the kill instead of an assist. So close to being able, almost got himself killed that turret shot as well. Uh-oh, Crepo face checks. Just a little bit. Broken Shard's gonna have to move out of that one. They'll be safe for now. Inox, very big in this game at level nine in the top lane. Pole Belter's nine as well. Those two the highest in the game, so they know they can control situations like this. I don't know, it's gonna be pretty hard for Complexity to control Inox Shivana as well. Right. He's getting to be a very strong Splitless threat. Already Cutlass completed. Oh, we're looking for a blade build. Oh, Poe Belter a little too far ahead. Ultimates being used to get himself out. So a bit of an error there, but Complex Eric EG rather has 
time to work with, if you will, they can make a few errors and they'll still be all right. The thing is, they're sending Shivana top right now. He has no teleport for Inox mm -hmm. since he just used it bottom. They're pretty much deciding to give away Dragon in favor of getting that large creep wave that is up top. So everybody just spreads out now. Because they have consciously made this yeah. decision to give up Dragon, they don't waste anyone else's time by standing around it. They get the top lane wave, they get some jungle camps, they get mid lane wave as well. So they make up a lot of that golden experience uh, by everyone farming it for themselves. Right. Good situation of knowing when you're ahead and what can go to the wayside. Inox in the top lane, like you said, teleport down. So he's looking to spend some time up there. See West Rice in just a few minutes as they're hovering towards the top side of the map. Ward coverage trying to be put down here. Keeping safe all tech and crap on the bottom lane. Man Cloud picks up the buffs. Looks like they're going to give that over to Poe Belter quite soon. So back to being aggressive. Mid laners back to trying to kill each other. Exactly what we like. Man Cloud going to be very happy with the respawn blue buff there. Uh, he is definitely down in items though. Spear's going to be less impactful yeah, than Blue and want. CS. Tries for the kill. Crepo always won in the lane to be aggressive. And yeah. Now, you. sometimes you want to throw out those hooks even when it won't result in much. In that instance, if even if that hook did land, it would just be a slightly favorable trade as far as damage in lane is concerned. But really what you're gaining is information on how your opponent likes to dodge. Mm -hmm. So you send out a couple of those hooks to figure out uh, if there's any patterns with your opponent and uh, it allows you to predict for when the crucial hook does come around I that will actually result in summer spells and kills uh, you'll be able to more frequently land on those yep. important ones it's almost like learning while you play <laughs> gotta it's like it poker out. you gotta get down uh, is this guy uh, a bluffer yeah. oh, is he a very yeah. aggressive player figure out how they're gonna move you just stare him straight in the eye and miss anyways. Coming up on 16 minutes, still a bit of a gold lead here for EG, but this is the part of the game where teams start to slow down. Everybody kind of is not in chaos here, but they're trying to push themselves into a situation where they continue their lead. EG is completely spread out across the map, which is not bad, but they're not really giving themselves a chance to move forward with anything. Yeah, and really up in that top lane, EG, Inox can't do a whole lot. He can't go super aggressive and push right. his lead because they don't have vision. If they want to take go. advantage of that, then they need more vision. Snoopy jumps in bottom. Pobelt are going down to the bottom lane. It's going to be a lot of dead complexity members. Broken Shard tries to stay, give Robert X Lee the benefit and get him out safe, but it does not look like they'll be able to clean up too much. Whoa, wait a minute. This little pinch move coming in here from Complexity could have a very good result, but maybe not. Washed out Stupid goes Robert out, X Lee. Bubba Dub goes down. Oh! No! Crepo gets hit. The cleaver to the backside. And Complexity is trying to find solace under the turret. Inox goes in hard. He is 2 1 and 3 right now. He's big, but he may be bigger than he thinks he is. Going into this, dodging out the spear. Man Cloud picks it up. And with the blue buff that Man Cloud has. Oh, Snoopy! The cleaver hits Inox. No pie to the face of the back line. And they are all so low as they limp away from the fight. Inox just ducking out on that one. Scratching his head as well. They get out of this safely, but both teams uh, testing each other to the max. What a ridiculous bot lane. I guess we can call that a, a fight. Scrap. That was a brawl what a bit for of sure. Scrap. Random projectiles flying all over the screen <laughs> for the next five minutes here. So it starts off a good dive by EG. They get pretty deep here though. Uh, and they aren't able to get Robert because of the flash, zoning him out. Once Mantori Cloud lands his spear, he arrives with the blue buff. It gets dangerous because Westrise teleports in first and a good cocoon from Broken Shard. He's able to lock up Snoopy. They don't finish him, but they do draw in two members of EG, get him low enough Damn. to get picked off. That was a hungry fight. That was a lot of blind movement. After everybody got into that brush, they're like, let's just keep going. I'm tunneled. We're going into this fight. It's eight to three now with 18 minutes on the clock. Teams are trying to get everything they can out of these fights, and it shows. 4,000 gold in the lead as Complexity picks up their map control. People loving it. And it looks like two turrets are the favor of EG as well. So the map, that much more closed down. Just being opened up like a present for EG. 
Towards the mid game here too. They can really rely on this Inox split push. His teleport's up now. His Blade of the Rune King is completed. He is a very fearsome top lane uh, force over there. And the rest of the team is very secure with their four versus four situation because they have Thresh and Lulu, two right. very strong supports uh, for the disengage if they need it. That can supplement the power of this Whoa. Jungle Kha'Zix. Rut row. Westry is getting caught out. Not really seeing a ward over there as well. It looks like it was actually swept during the situation. So he was trying to give the team cover, but an unfortunate situation gives the domino effect to Complexity members here. And now two have fallen just for that. Yeah, Complexity looking a little disoriented there. Catching out Westry all by his lonesome from uh, Evil Geniuses from the mid lane here. And nobody collapses really. Mundo's doing his tanking while no damage is being dealt. And it's going to spell bad things for your team. EG keeping themselves in the position they need to to take advantage of what they said in the beginning of the game. Complexity may not be ready for LTS games on the stage, especially with a new mid laner. So you catch them off guard. You catch one person off on the side. The calls aren't there for Complexity right now, and EG's going right through to those calls. Yeah, uh, their lack of Crawley in the mid lane, the main shot caller yeah. definitely hurting them now, showing, showing through. See if they can actually turn it around though, because pretty big deficit to work back from here. It's it is. pretty much turtle mode. They do have that random factor though. They've got so much power in skill shots. Elise Cocoon, Morgana Bindings, Nidalee Spears. If they can get right. consecutive skill shots to land, they can still turn this around. See what they get on Dragon here. Oh, oh there's one that's uh, That'll do. <laughs> not going to help. You know, very interesting here by Robert X Lee because you've heard different things. We'll see if Westrace actually tries to fight this. They're getting the noodles out. No fight. Alltech builds the Phage first, but Robert X Lee pieces together the Crystal and the Ability Tome, which don't really provide you much as you're going towards the Sheen. Do you piece that together or do you go for the health and the damage? If yeah, he really them. wants that mid-game burst of the, the Sheen damage. Like I was saying last game, it just helps out so much for these mid-game skirmishes. And Complexity are behind right now. They right. really need something to help them turn around a mid-game fight so they can get back in. So still piece it together. Burst of damage yeah. from that Sheen. He needs it as soon as possible, even though he can just get those pieces. Uh, he wants to be able to complete it. Right on, we see an impact. the top left, West Rice's teleport is down. That was canceled out by Enox. It's a great job. It's really shutting down West Rice. 155 to 105 in that lane, looking down to the mid now. 181 to 148 in creep score. So really great job by the solo lanes. And really the people, if you say EG, you've been looking at. Pole Belter and Inox. Those solo lanes have been doing a lot for Evil Geniuses. Yeah, and Snoopy has not died this time around. Uh, with Kha'Zix, it's, mm -hmm. it's always nice to yep. be able to have a Lulu to work with, because Kha'Zix really <laughs> loves getting into the mid lane and or into the melee, and he builds damage early, so he needs something else to, uh, to use for his defenses. Lulu shields and ultis are just what the doctor ordered for him. Inox. One last breath on his turret, saves it from going down for now. Keeps the push going, so he'll be able to farm pretty nicely here as long as he wants. And EG's in control of the game. Like we said, they have some time to allow errors, allow some things to happen, but it's not on their plate. They're looking to close this one out. Our previous game ended only seven minutes from now. Just imagine that. Oh, West Rice. Huzzah! That's the box as well. You might be able to get out. There's a bump. There's a few more. He is not getting out. They set a fire under his feet. He's not able to get very far. Altec joins the party with the Thresh Express Lantern, and it looks like they're going to be getting a turret out of this one. Once again, one person's been taken out in a row. Yeah, you really got to be careful uh, when you're this far behind and you're, the entire map is being controlled by your opponents. Venturing into your, un, your own jungle, it's not yeah. really your own jungle. <laughs> uh, especially when you don't have vision of that top side. You no longer have the deed. You can de definitely commence complexity for their defensive vision on their red side, but all that it takes is blue side one kill, turret, and they immediately move right over to Baron. This is uh, EG going for the killing yeah. blow here once they get Baron. That is a dark vision on Baron. Man Cloud's going to swipe it down in cougar form. And EG with great breadcrumb wards along their backside. Keeps them safe. The teleport to the bottom lane. It's kind of everything's just falling into place for EG right now when they need it to. 
That's even able to teleport up to that yeah, exactly. bottom lane so that they don't lose turret out in exchange. They really didn't even have to trade anything for that Baron. Almost free. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is free, though, ever. Inox pretty, pretty beefy now as well. Both of the melee damage sources are transitioning into tank builds. It's going to be very hard for Complexity, even if they do land consecutive skill shots. These guys are tanky enough now that they can survive it. And there's Ben and Mikhail's added mm -hmm. to get the first recipient of a CC. Right? Not only did EG kind of make the solo lanes go well, Alltech got out of laning phase 0, 0, and 4. And if he, these fight phase go yeah. as, they, as they have for him, he's going to be getting 4 or 5 kills before the end of the game. He has been shining in the team fights, so EG are pretty much at the exact spot they wanted to be. Looking pretty strong. Like we said, all these games today will even the teams out. I believe if EG wins this one, they even up with complexity. Each game is like that today that we have. Somebody can even it out. We'll have to see if EG will be able to. They're looking pretty good so far. Mikhail's Crucible fixed up as well, so even more safety if Poe Belter's Wild Growth does not get enough pressure down to help the disengage. A minute and 30 left on Dragon. There's not going to be a teleport for that, at least for Enox. So we'll see what he does. The team, again, on the top side of the jungle. Oh. Vision Wars going down. Smart by Complexity to kind of not <laughs> that, engage. That ward barely on the other side here from the pink. Not going to be seen by EG. So, Complexity get a little knowledge. <laughs> but they can't do anything with it. So really, they're just looking to hold on to these turrets. Yep. See if they can do it. It's going to have to be multiple... Italy Spears onto Altec specifically. Oh! Tried to get it in the death of the minion, Crepo. A little sneaky sneak games with his death sentence there. Seen by Mancloud, he knows. As you can see, Mancloud playing the Fog of War games with Spears at the moment. Snoopy getting caught out here. I like the way Snoopy's kind of built up. He's got one giant spell and the Negatron Cloak, because piecing together everything will keep him alive. Yeah, you can see there, even though he gets hit up by the CC and consecutive Spear, one shield from Lulu. And yep. it means nothing. Crepo eating that one in the face. He should be all right, though. Pretty well. He's got the Kindle Gem, actually, for a bit more of the HP. Okay, second one. That's a little too much. Let's see if a third one gets in there. Level 13s and 15s on the side of EG right now. There are no 15s or even 14s for complexity, so they are really on the back foot. And Broken Shard has been kind of behind most of this game. Yeah. He's built fully defensively here. Yet he's still extremely squishy. Even cooldown, yeah. So, yeah, it's a pretty rough game for him. He is trying to go team oriented, though. Gets the aura, magic resist aura for the rest of his team. Trying to help out everybody. All about EG's ability now to close out the game. Looking very good in gold. Awesome in kills right now. Five to two in turrets. He'll probably use a little bit more. The bottom one is easily focused if they can get these minion waves down. They got about a minute left on Baron, plus three for the respawn. So they got time to work with. And they laid a lot of vision down here in the blue side jungle that is getting swept out by Complexity. So it's Complexity, look how scary this has got to be, though. They don't see anyone on yeah. the map while they're clearing out this vision. So dangerous to do. Got to be able to time those recalls, though. One of the biggest things in, in the game is being able to extrapolate the small amount of information that you get and figure out where people are going to be for the next 30 seconds. They just, you just saw him recalling from bottom. Don't have to be worried that he's in your blue side jungle at your river until about 40 more seconds. I like that. Gauge the time of where someone is in 30 seconds. It's a good rule of thumb. 27 and a half. So you have Poe Belter and Crepo in the bottom lane. Engage how much time they have down here. They do have Alltech. He's roaming a little slow. He won't be going over any wards, but this is where EG can also get themselves into a scary spot when they're trying to catch up with each other and not everything's formulated just yet. They're not that far ahead of the game. Something can still go wrong. Everything going right for EG right now. They're yeah. just relying on Ooh. Split Push Shivana. As we said, Teleport is ready. 
rest of the team easily taking out the bottom turret before Complexity are able to get down there. Now, though, oh, comes the man. hardest egg to crack, the inhibitor turret line. Yeah. It's kind of nice. They don't. All they have is really Lucian calling to clear out a wave. So once they get their poke in it's, there, they got Corky and Lulu. Yeah, it's slow work for EG. Uh, getting up into this inhibitor, uh, inhibitor line here. We'll see if they can actually make something happen in the next minute. If they don't, in the next maybe 45 seconds or so, then they'll probably make the call just to control, again, the vision around blue side so they can take the next Baron easily. If they go and spend their time right now to clear out Complexity's wards through the blue side jungle that will lead up to Baron, right. then they can easily force Complexity into one of those very scary situations where they have no vision and they're worried about giving up the free Barons forcing them to face check. And look at, we can see Complexity trying to put together the binding in the cocoon, but never a follow-up. So now EG's waiting for it. Once again, they'll have wards in place. However, once it happens the other way, Hobelts are taking some damage there, but Broken Shard's forced into repel immediately. Another one a lot's being used for Complexity not to fully engage here. They want some breathing room, and it looks like they're going to get it. Whoa! I think that would have been uh, the one. Inox Gone. still holding onto his teleport, too. Didn't decide to blow it there. EG playing it cool. Calling down West Rice. Snoopy's going to be forced to back off here. Snoopy low on mana. Pobelt are low on health. So is Crepo. be very dangerous to keep toying with this situation. You can see EG backing now in the bottom lane. 11 seconds on Baron. Really timing everything once again for EG to be in position. They are 30 minutes coming up on the clock. Very careful. Complexity feels like they have it. Well, they do have a pink ward above them. There we go. Just seeing it on the mini map. They are safe. Looks like Broken Star will stay with Robert. Just for a little extra safety. Slow, Slow and though. steady yep. wins the race. Yeah. It's always been kind of an EG game, though, right? Slow and steady. It has. These, these players, there's only two of them left now, but both Snoop and Crepo yep. have no problem. That, in, that initial strategy game. still lives strong. This time, though, they're actually on the upper hand. Usually when they're playing these long games, yep. it was them <laughs> defending their so, turrets. Setting up a garrison in each wall of the base. This time, they're sieging up. Trying to win this war, though, is actually dangerous. So many skill shots hitting here. Yeah. One, two, three, he lands. Exactly what you want is in Italy, just to be able to huff spears into the entire team. Snoopy looking very big, but he's just eating the calling for breakfast. Inox now in the front line. They're not even taking damage practically, sharing it across each other perfectly. Snoopy back into the fight in a 3v1 as he's quickly out of that with the second invisibility. And it looks like they're going to be able to run through this one very nicely. A good try by Broken Shard to find his target, but Evil Geniuses goes through the batting order and finds their target even better. Let's see what Man Cloud can do. It's pretty much up to him. If he can land a couple spears, maybe try and scare them off Baron. It oh, no. is, is such this. a risky mission, though. This is ridiculously uh, rough for Man Cloud here. Just straight up base checking into a five man Baron squad, hoping oh. for a God Spear. That would have been a Baron Steel Spear, but not too much going in the way of damage. Crapo blinking red, Inox blinking red. Pobelter gets hit right in the kisser. Robert X Lee goes down as he tries to turn and run. Very nice job. EG coming up again with Baron. Full domination over this game, and they're keeping it very nicely. Yeah, that was just the desperation there from Complexity. Of course, can't really blame them for trying to pull something out here. Otherwise, they would just lose slowly. Take a look at that Inox, though, coming in from the back. Able to arrive and just Shivana ulti uh, Bubba Dub right back into the team. And they actually take him out. Uh, there we go. Man. Nobody goes okay. down for EG, as we know, even in their uh, follow-up Baron here. Broken does a good thing trying to go for Snoopy, but as we said, he built fully tank. The execute damage not there. He does not have the spell penetration to back it up. Props to Crepo in these fights. Multiple times he's gotten out with pretty much sub 200, sub 100, but he's still on the outside throwing lanterns to the team for safety. Knowing what needs to happen. Gets down some more wards, fully upgraded on his items as well. Gets himself a little bit of extra movement on the alacrity going into his mobility boots. So he's looking to make some things happen. They're looking to end this game quite soon. Letting it go a little long. Now, is there potential to be worried for the team complexity to come back here? They're not looking too late game. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you can say there's always potential for comebacks, but it is uh, low chance. Low chance. Say that.
Inox, though, since he's actually gone second damage item here instead of stacking on just more armor, yeah. the tower dive might be a little bit more risky for EG. That being said, he is ridiculously strong, and he actually has the damage to one versus one anyone on this team, even under a turret. So not really a blessing there for complexity. E Evil Geniuses definitely uh, can just return to the same strategy and push right in. Looking around at all the armor, Robert X. Lee yet to finish that last whisper. It'd be like shooting a brick wall for him right now as he goes up against Inox, even up against Snoopy, who's going to be right in his face. This is where Man Cloud really can step up the game for the team. More spears, but EG in their face immediately, denying that space he needs to throw the spears, and they're going to try to engage. Snoopy instantly onto Man Cloud, forcing Cougar form in the middle of the fight and out of the fight onto Broken Shard. No repel from him. West Rice is the next focus, and the EG comms must be going wild right now with complexity names going down. They just don't give you any time to throw out Spear. No. no time to throw skill shots. Run up and obliterate the turret. Right up in your face. Riot Shield there as well. Present to be used. 34 minutes on the clock. Looks like they're going to be able to take down a second Nexus turret as Complexity tries to pepper EG out of the base. It's not going to be enough damage. Alltech going to zero while Bubba Dub by himself. A little bit of the assist coming in on the side of Krepo. Robert X Lee down on the fountain. Snoopy dumps it out alive. He grits his teeth as EG takes down Complexity. Coming in at 34 minutes. Big win for Complexity. I mean, for EG, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, against Complexity. It does bring them to uh, one, uh, tied there for a bottom spot for seventh, I guess. Seventh and eighth for both of those guys. And that, those are the most important wins. Yeah, they, they're tough. trying to get not only a win for themselves, but also a loss for Complexity, who's the team that they're trying to push under them in the standings. Complexity, with a great start, dominated Cloud9. We're able to hold a great snowball. And now taking out Complexity obviously has to feel good. Fighting Cloud9 is a whole different hurdle. Nothing connects there. But still, for this to happen, a new leaf, or just a leaf in general, needed to be turned over here for EG because they were looking like they were going to, you know, history repeats itself for last split. Well, they got a, a new young guy. They yep. started out with Poe Belter. Now adding Altec in takes a little while to get used to it. Um, but yeah, they have shown up pretty big in this game. Not much to say there. They definitely controlled the game all the way through and racked up a lot of points on the way to do it. Yeah, they did. Very nicely played. 5-1 and 11. Pole belts are coming in.